While we're doing that, let's bring in Michael Chamis, our colleague from uh, Nine News, the Sydney Morning Herald, the footy show and 100% footy. He's on the line with us now. Hello, Michael. Hey, boys. How are we? Mate, really well. Um, I've got a few people here saying, uh, Mark, Sydney Morning Herald reporting that our man Anthony Griffin's under a bit of pressure at the St George Illawarra Dragons. Now, Michael, you're carrying the story. What can you tell us? Yeah, look, I just reported there on the Sydney Morning Herald and on Nine that um, there's a board meeting on Tuesday. It's a scheduled board meeting, but there are, there are people at the club who are concerned, concerned with the performance of the team, and obviously that entails Anthony Griffin. Now, you remember at the start of the year, the criticism of the club was why, why on earth would they extend Anthony Griffin? And, not, and I came on here and defended the decision because the club felt as though they needed the stability and they needed Anthony to feel as though he had time to help these young guys come through. But the criticism now is that the young guys aren't the ones actually coming through. Um, the, they, they've sort of plateaued, if not gone backwards, some of these younger guys with their performances. So the questions are going to be asked at Tuesday's board meeting around the future of the club and, and Griffin will be under the, underneath the microscope. So I'm not saying that he's lost his job, but there are people at the club who want to know if they are heading in the right direction and whether or not they've made a mistake by handing Anthony Griffin that one year, triggering that one year option for him in, in 2023. I reckon the response oh, from Hook will be, Come on, Michael, leave me alone. I'm doing my best <laughs> but, down here but in Wollongong. Michael, who are, who, are the, who are these people hiding behind a board meeting? Do you know them? Well, I've written about the story. So, yeah, look, I've, I've spoken to multiple people at the club. Now, obviously, as you can probably appreciate, no one wants to go on the record at this point, but there are people at the club who, who want answers in regards to, as I said, the team's performance. They're now outside the eight. They've dropped, I think, 86 points in those last two games. And some of the younger guys aren't improving. So the questions are going to be asked about where they're heading under Anthony Griffin. And I've written in that story as well that there are some players who aren't seeing eye to, aren't seeing eye, to eye with Hook, and they also feel as though that there's some players there that the Queensland trio of Ben Hunt, uh, Josh McGuire and Andrew McCullough getting special treatment. So it's, the, the, the signs, unfortunately, are starting to appear at the Dragons, and we've seen this at multiple clubs where, where, where there's unrest amongst the players and people start talking that's when things start to unravel. So hopefully if, if the Dragons do feel as though Anthony Griffin's their right man, they nip it in the bud and move on. But Manly's game on Friday night, they lose that. Manly with four points clear of the Dragons and you're almost in, in a mathematical equation uh, when you get to that point if you're four points behind with only six or seven rounds to go. So hopefully the Dragons can turn around this week. I read the other day about Mitch Moses being well, almost escorted off the pitch here the other night because he's had death threats against him and I think his family, this what, is what's going on with this? Terrible. Yeah, look, it's a real frightening story that uh, during the week last week that Mitchell Moses' his family member received a phone call, multiple phone calls and text messages uh, with death threats aimed at Mitchell. And that, those, uh, those, that was reported to the NRL and, and, and the Eels were involved and made sure that the police were notified and the police escorted Mitchell in and out of the venue. Um, and that, from my understanding, is going to continue this week. They, they haven't been able to catch the person who made these, uh, these threats to Mitchell and his family, and they haven't been able to, to source where it's from. But one thing that the Eels did on the weekend, they're going to continue to do, is metal detectors at the ground. I know this it's Australia, it's not America. You walk into American sports and a lot of these places have metal detectors, but I'll be waving a little wand to make sure that everyone who walks into Combank Stadium on Thursday night uh, isn't carrying anything that could cause any danger. So they're treating this one very seriously. And it's a, I, know I got Mitchell's that on Friday. I played a, but, a little bit yeah, yesterday. We but, all did, yeah. Michael, when you say that he's received death threats, do you, is it via his, fa- via his phone, via um, social media? Do you know so how an, he's... An immediate, received- immediate family member received multiple calls from somebody, um, wow. basically make, making threats to, aimed at Mitchell, which was obviously passed on to Mitchell and ended up to the NRL and police. So uh, these weren't, this, this is not a imbecile on social media, keyboard warrior. These were actual personal phone calls and messages, uh, multiple phone calls and messages. Well, Michael, can, member, I, so. can I can I tell you something? And, and you know, I'm 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 a staunch supporter of the police across Australia. Um, I, I know somebody who went through something similar to this uh, in another sort of realm of life. It wasn't long before the police tracked down that person. They have this amazing technology and all that sort of thing. So uh, I'm sure for Mitchell's sake and for anyone who knows Mitchell Moses, uh, the police will be onto this. And if they haven't already tracked down who that person is, they, they wouldn't be too far away because um, obviously it's a very serious matter and obviously they will leave it in the, the, the hands of the police and the investigators and everything else, Piggy. But um, yep. I'm sure that person will be before the court sooner rather than later. Yeah, let's hope so. Hey, Michael, what about uh, Rooster star Victor Radley? It looks like he's turned his back on playing for New South Wales as he's elected to represent England at this year's World Cup. 
Well, it seems that way, wouldn't it? It's just, uh, it's an interesting one because I don't know if Victor Radley understands the implications of, of what he'd do if he played for England at the World Cup because, as you said, it means he won't be able to play for New South Wales. I called Victor earlier, he brushed me. Sorry, boys, I haven't been able to get an answer from Victor in regards to all of this, but if he does play for England, he can kiss his New South Wales jersey goodbye because under the current rules, he can't play. So it's a Tier 1 nation, England. Um, I think there are rules in place that if you play for a Tier 2 nation that things could change after a World Cup uh, after a World Cup cycle that maybe you could play. In, uh, there, there are all sorts of confusing rules. But basically, if he plays for England at the World Cup, I'm told he can't play for New South Wales. But right. We'll take him up in Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> of course you will. New South Wales. It, it is an interesting oh, okay. one because he actually rang Freddie, remember, mm. a few weeks ago, and then Freddie brought him into the yeah. the Blues camp when he was coming back from injury. So We might have Victor Radley saying, Hello, Govna. I think, he's Hello, da- he, I think from reports, and Michael, you might be able to help me. I think his dad's English, yeah. and that's how he how he qualifies. Yeah, that's right. He's, yeah, his dad has English heritage, so he qualifies. There's no question about that, but geez, he'll disqualify himself from New South Wales. I'm not sure if he's thought it through. No, especially after what we saw on Wednesday night. We might need him next year. Good on you, Michael. You're all over it, mate. We'll read all about it in the Sydney Morning Herald tomorrow, mate. Thanks so much. Thanks, boys.